Good day. How are you? Uh, in this session, I'm going to talk a very, very quickly about the basics of what is hydronephrosis because many of you, my dear friends, will be getting questions on this and uh, even case presentations. Okay. So I won't be going into details. I will be just telling you what is basically hydronephrosis. Now, suppose this is the kidney. Maybe this is, take it as this is the left kidney. And as we all know, from my previous lectures, this is the pelvis. Okay, this is a very rough diagram. Okay, it's a pelvis, and then this is the pelvic ureteric junction. Then we have the ureter. So, if by any by by any case there is an obstruction anywhere, anywhere. So this is the ureter. It goes down. Then we have the uh, ureterovesical junction. Then we have the bladder, and then in males we have the prostate. Then we have the urethra. So anywhere if there is an obstruction, there will be dilatation of the renal pelvis okay the pelvis will be pellute now my dear friends i want to put one quest one important topic over here is doesn't need obstruction even a backflow backflow of urine without an anatomical obstruction can cause the same thing the same dilatation of the pelvis and balloonia of the pelvis so an aseptic dilatation of the pelvis by obstruction or reflux is known as hydronephrosis. Okay. And in this context, I wanted to give you a few definitions. So, very, very uh, basically, uh, you can say very rough estimations or definitions is what is an obstructive uropathy? An obstructive uropathy is hydronephrosis with changes, in the, as I said, in the uh, pelvis due to obstruction. So obstructive neuropathy and reflux disease can cause both hydronephrosis. And if obstruction, obstructive neuropathy is uh, causing any functional or anatomical impairment in renal function or kidney architecture, like we suppose because this of, because of this ballooning of the pelvis, you have cortical thinning, then it is known as the obstructive nephropathy. So these are the few things you have to understand. Very important, if there is infection within the hydronephrosis, sac this is known as the infected hydronephrosis. And if there's pus formation within this hydronephrosis, known as the pyonephrosis. Now, pyonephrosis is different from pyelonephritis because pyelonephritis involves the renal parenchyma. So, my dear friends, there are a few things I needed to tell you. And uh, so... Just to complete today's presentation, I want to run a very quick, I want to be very, uh, do a very quick run of uh, a presentation I've made for my students um, on hydronephrosis. So some of the slides can, you can see on the internet, uh, you can see on multiple textbooks, I've just uh, uh, kept them for on this, uh, uh, for the uh, easier understanding of what this is a concept. So this is very important, okay. Hydronephrosis can be bilateral. When it is bilateral, it is involves below. Okay, I will just let me stop this. Share uh, my screen uh, for this, this this thing because it's very important. I want to tell you. Suppose this is this is known as a unilateral hydronephrosis. Okay, so suppose the both the kidney are affected. How can both the kidney be, be affected? If there is any obstruction bilaterally in the ureter, okay, it can be a bilateral pu junction obstruction pelvic junction obstruction, it can be a bilateral ureteric stones, or if there is any obstruction at the bladder level or below, then it can cause a bilateral hydronephrosis. And this is a cause of what is known as the acute leading to chronic renal failure. Okay, so bilateral hydronephrosis is always a, a cause of a worry. Okay, so then if the the hydronephrosis means dilated aseptic dilatation of the renal pelvis and if the ureter is also dilated it becomes a hydronephrosis okay now next is as i said this is the definition we just mentioned and this is an anatomical gross anatomical which as i said you can see the pelvis is grossly dilated this is most likely a ureter pelvic junction obstruction as you can understand the uh, the calluses are dilated the cupping normal cupping is lost and the clubbing of the calluses is occurred and there is gross parenchymal atrophy so this is a case of most likely most likely because the, uh, i feel clinically it looks like a congenital puja uh, obstruction or with this obstructive nephropathy okay 
So the morphology, I say, we have talked about this obliteration, the papillar flattening of the pyramids, and ultimately involved of the involvement of the uh, this thing, uh, of the ureter. So it can be, I say, it can be the level of the kidneys, it can be level of the uh, pelvis, it can be the ureter, down below bladder, and also the urethra. Very important to understand that even patients with neurogenic bladders can have can have a reflux disease, as you can say, because they are not able to about to uh, not able to flow the urine integrally so they can have reflux of disease because of over distended bladder or they can have uh, because of this chronically dial because of the chronically uh, uh, obstructing nature of uh, there there can be an obstructing nature of the bladder detrusor at the level of the urethral junction and they can, there can be a secondary obstruction at the level of the urethral junction it happened in young uh, this is a, the, the young boys and also in children, male children with PUV, that's the posture, uh, the posture use of valve. They what is known as the valve bladder syndrome. So that is very important. There can be a primary obstruction downwards, and there can be some this detrusor hypertrophy at the level of the uterusical junction, causing obstruction uh, uh, also. So, okay. So this is the very important because whenever I talk about hydronephrosis, the, the topic of antenatal hydronephrosis also comes in because it's a very important uh, uh, entity. It's very a bit different from uh, uh, the normal uh, patients because you can say you can ask, somebody can ask you congenital hydronephrosis can be of many causes and there's something called the congenital because congenital PU junction obstruction can present later in life, say 30, 40 years, but it's a congenital cause. Okay, what is the physiologic hydronephrosis can occur in? Pregnant females, because the right side, uh, the second trimester onwards, right side of the kidney and the ureter are dilated. Okay, the dilatation may persist even six weeks postpartum, even after delivery of the kid. Okay, and something called adrenal hydronephrosis, most of these are transient. You can find them on the antenatal and maternal scans, but they often go off. But there are some causes where they persist because of uterine junction obstruction, reflux disease, and also very important postural valves. Okay. So uh, now that's very important. Hydronephrosis causes changes in glomerular filtration, tubular function, and renal blood flow. Now here is important thing I, I need to tell you uh, is, uh, okay, I need to tell you is how, what, because if we talk about what is the pathophysiology of hydronephrosis, the first thing will come that how does hydronephrosis causes problems in uh, obstructed kidney? Now, as you can understand, as you can understand, uh, is uh, uh, let me tell you. So what really happens is suppose uh, we know now we have talked about uh, uh, in our anatomy part of the nephron nephron. So we know what is this is the this is the Bowman's capsule. The whole thing is known as the Bowman's capsule, and this is as we know is the glomerulus. Okay, so as we know. This is afferent arterial, it's nephron arterial, and the, there is a filtration of uh, urine. Okay, filtration of urine. So this is basically what is known as the glomerular filtration, where the waste products are being taken out, and then there will be some amount of tubular secretion as well, and because of tubular transport, some of the are later reabsorbed. What not really happens is, think it as a as a funnel. Think it because it's a common space, no? common space. Okay, this is a glomerular basement membrane. Okay. And uh, this is the glomerulus. So, if there isn't any obstruction, say downwards, that this will be reflected in the distal, in the collecting duct, then in the distal conveyor tube, loop of Henle, the proximal conveyor tube, and ultimately in this uh, Bowman space. So, this is what is known as the capsule, the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure. Okay. So, what is the net filtration pressure will depend upon the glomerular filtration pressure or the you can say the glomerular uh, filtration uh, pressure minus the this thing which is known as the uh, capillary hydrostatic that's the glomerular hydrostatic pressure equal to uh, is minus let me tell you what is net filtration pressure what is net nfpp net, net filtration pressure okay net filtration pressure is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure, this is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure minus the capsular hydrostatic pressure will be the pressure will be going on the other side. Plus colloidal osmotic pressure, that is the pressure which is induced by the amino acids and the proteins in outside this uh, in, uh, outside this uh, basement uh, membrane, which will try to, because it has a negative impact, uh, this, this will try to pull the water part, the fluid part outside the Bowman space. Net filtration pressure it will be directly proportional to 
glomerular hydrostatic pressure and as i said inversely proportional to the bowman space capsular hydrostatic pressure so whenever there is obstruction this will go up and the net filtration pressure will decrease so the gfr which is directly proportional to net filtration pressure will also decrease so with time as i said there will be there will be all uh, this thing there will be decrease in gfr there will decrease in tubular function and also because of compression effect on the fn arterial there will be decrease in renal blood flow now this is the pathophysiology this is for the uh, uh, we will discuss it later on this, this is what really happens ultimately leads to renal failure so clinical course obviously think about bilateral hydronephrosis or bilateral hypnosis you have to take care this is obstruction you have to put in a catheter okay so that's very important these are the symptoms again the multiple symptoms of patient can also be asymptomatic and be uh, worked up for some dyspeptic symptoms of gas problems and then all these problems comes up so hypertension if you're single obstruction then it is really angiotensin induced okay so the treatment protocol will be different and if it is a bilateral obstruction obviously it's a volume induced that's it. so when you correct the volume the hypertension goes on first there's some grading and uh, grade depending upon that uh, it's very important to do a physical examination see whether the kidneys are palpable see whether the blood is palpable do also digital electric examination for the prostate for the rectal mass and also for the neurogenic status okay so this basically i did it for the students and uh, i will end my lecture over here so okay so i think i uh, hope you got a brief i will be i will be giving another uh, broad thing i will be making it as a course and i will be sh sh sharing it with my then my website in the library section so you can go and watch it uh, till then uh, please comment if you have any questions and be, and uh, stay fit and i will be coming right back with another video on uh, in my uh, this lecture series thank you bye bye